Hello everyone at Zero Altair with Actation Now and this is the Midweek Zap and I am so excited today. Stan Bush is here and we're going to be talking about distilling your business down to a 15 second elevator pitch and so it's just great and welcome all the Zapsters and welcome new people. Um, very exciting. Stan, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I, for those that know me, they will know that it would I would be remiss in my duties without saying this. I'm Nurt Novice. It doesn't bother me a bot. I'm Stan Bush. So grab your notebook or your notebook app because this is Zara Altair's midweek zap. And I'm <laughs> on it. We are going to have some fun. I could just tell you I am ready. I wanted to. I will tell you a couple of things. I see people out in the audience that that I know and respect and love and just. Uh, uh, but I, I I talked to David Leopold yesterday, and I know that David Leopold is interviewing David Amerlin right now, right now. I know that because we talked about that yesterday, and I thought and I think it's kind of ironic because the first interview I ever did was with David Leopold. And guess what was happening on the other channel? Another hangout with Martin Shervington was interviewing Chris Brogan. And so <laughs> that was the interview that was going on on my very first hangouts. But I want to promise everybody this, that if you leave this hangout, you're going to miss something. <laughs> but if you stay at this hangout, you're going to miss something. You're going to miss something either way. Both of, them, both of us are very different. If you like big words, you know, David's got them, and you know I, I'm cognizant of the theorem of diminishing returns caused by the failure of interconnecting components, but I'm more likely to say something ain't jihad right, and that's what we're going. That's what I'm going to be talking about: how to do something in about 15 seconds to get that concept out. So I'm real hard to get to talk, ain't I? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have been looking forward to this. Like I shared with you in the green room, I, you know, I've, I've had some nervous jitters, you know, because I have not done a hangout, a public hangout since February fifth, and um, this is going to be, this is going to be good. This is going to be fun. Stan, you're getting compliments already. Lila Martin, <laughs> your makeup looks good. <laughs> Yours does too, Leela. Yours looks great. <laughs> I can see it. Or at least I know that in a in a fifteen minute elevator pitch, that's what I better say. But it is um, it is real fun to be here. Um, and so, is there anything that you know you'd like to talk about or ask me to to begin with on a on a how to put together a fifteen minute or fifteen second elevator pitch? Or do you want to how I got started? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about how you got started, and then we'll get into that because um, we were talking in, in the green room about some distinctions, and I think we'll go to those next. But yeah, tell us a little bit about how you got started. Well, like everybody, I got you know, I got started like everybody. I was like a, a glint in my daddy's eye and a smile on my mama's face, and you know, after I was born, they figured I was a keeper, and so I hung out around the house and cut the grass, weeded the garden, and baited the the hooks while we when we went fishing. I delivered newspapers, which is where I first learned how to do some sales stuff. I made all A's in school until I changed schools. And that, by changing schools, what, what happened was, you know, went to summer break, and then when we came back from the summer break into 11th grade, there were some new people at school called girls, and they were like, wait, they were all different. And I, I, was, I remember heading down to the shop, you know, because I was going to take shop, and I passed by the typing class, and it was there was all girls in there. So I went to the shop, and there was a bunch of guys in there, and I I'd been in the gym with them for years, so I, I already knew they smelled bad and sweated. So I opted for the typing class, and then later on, as computers came on the scene, I was the only guy that could type. So before but before that happened, I was in all the sales stuff that I ever did. That was what I did, I was the top guy in sales. But as the computers became more and more, you know, uh, prevalent in everyday work and stuff, you know, I had to take over the responsibility because, like I said, I was the only guy that could type. So that's how I wound up going from sales into, you know, the technical stuff that I do. And I still love technical stuff, 
and I've had uh, some, you know, a level of success with the technical stuff, but I'm really, really raring to get back to doing some stuff like this, like these 15 minute uh, or 15 second, I keep calling them 15 minute, but these 15 second elevator pitches and what's the real truth about, you know, how relationship marketing and stuff works, you know. <laughs> that Hard to talk to, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I saw you several months ago now um, you know, talk about creating an elevator pitch, and I'm like, oh my gosh, got to get Stan on the midweek zap because I think it's so important that people can hone down, you know, so that you're standing in line in the grocery store or wherever it is, and you start up a conversation with someone, and pretty soon, they're going to say, so what is it you do? Bingo. You need to have it ready. Not a long thing. And we were talking in the green room earlier um, about the film world and, and the difference between an elevator pitch and a tagline. And I think that, you know, what you need for your business first is that tagline, which is the thing that creates the interest in the spark and then you have your elevator pitch so let me give an example from the film world from the film world the elevator pitch is you know you meet the producer in the elevator and they say yeah so what's the story about and you go okay so this guy Jimmy comes to New York and all of a sudden he's in trouble with the gangs and he doesn't know how and he meets this girl and together they escape, or you know, whatever your story is, you the beginning, middle, and end, and the main characters. And what the tagline is, is Jimmy saves the day. So it's a, it, the tagline is this emotional, you know, oh man, I want to, I want to hear the rest of this story. So the so for me, the first thing that you say when you're, you're doing that standing in line or in the elevator or wherever it is that you are, even a networking meeting, is because everybody's handing out their cards and all that stuff at a networking meeting, you want them to remember you. So the tagline is really, really important. It's that emotional hook. Thing, you know when everything's on fire oh my gosh you know that that's the kind of emotional hook that you that you want your elevator pitch because Stan was talking earlier in the green room you know you really need several and then there's the here's what I actually do so let me ask you a question I remember when we were on on, uh, on Leopold's and yep. Um, I asked you, we, we were talking about a pitch, and I gave you a, a, an elevator pitch. Do you remember what it was? Mm -mm. No, you gave me an elevator pitch? Yes, I sure did. I told you, I said, this right here would work really good for you because I'm going to see if you use this word again. Um, what is it that you do? What is it that, that I do? What, what do you do? Oh, uh, I... I translate, you know, all that SEO for business owners who are non-technical. For, for business uh, people that were that are non-technical, well, what I was um, the what I kept hearing you talking about was that you help people with their pain. You know, trying to understand what the what their um, you know uh, pain was and trying to figure out That's all the right. technology and stuff. That's what you were doing. You said. I, you know, I help them with their pain. So, I'm um, off the top of my head. For for you, the answer was when somebody says, you know, what do you what do you do? You know, it was the what was it? Do you remember now? It was a human ibuprofen. I'm a human ibuprofen. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny because if you were to say that to me, I would be I would be I'd be going like, what are you doing? <laughs> human ibuprofen. What, what does that mean? I mean, because that's what a that's what a uh, for me that's what a fifteen. Because obviously, if I find it very difficult to talk, you know, uh, obviously. So for me, it's I need an opening to talk, and most people that's all they really need. They just need an opening to talk to tell somebody 
what it is they do. So if I was to ask you what you did and you said, I'm a human ibuprofen, I'd go, what does that mean? You'd say, all that pain that's associated with all that stuff that you do that has to do with technology, I help take that away. And anybody, like I, the first time I knew that the tagline of I'm the guy to hire when everything's on fire, I'm, I, I actually kind of made that up on the spot at a, at a fireman's, at a, uh, at a firehouse subs. Uh, I can see the window right now. And there was a guy sitting over here, and there was a guy sitting in front of me, and um, and we were talking, and he said something about the work that I was, uh, uh, the work that I had done for him. He said, you know, he thought like he actually said, he said, you know, when you came in here, it was just a, there was a, it was like a fire sale. He said, there's just everything was on fire, and I, and I said, I'm the guy to hire when everything's on fire. And the guy that was sitting right caddy corner to us, or caddy wampus, whichever one you prefer, um, he he just spit his coffee out. He started laughing, and he says, "Give me your card." And I was like, "Okay, well that works." And the guy still he's still a client, and so I knew that 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 would be a good you know a good tagline for me. So a lot of times those taglines and those things that you say to people are are, are little bits of marketing. You know, magic is what they are. Really, it's like you just have. That's why you have to have. That's why you have to have more than one. You know, that's why you have to have more than one because sometimes that wouldn't fit. It just wouldn't. I just went to um, the work is here, and he says the elevator is going up, Stan. <laughs> Well, that means a lot coming from Vivek. I, I like that guy. I, that means a lot to me. And the and the and the and everybody that the, anybody that's in the audience that that you, you guys already know that the comment stream, you know, I I can walk and chew bubble gum at one time, but I do trip up. So uh, Zara has got. Uh, she's going to let me know what that is. I just I I never do that, which is actually. When you get to really when you're doing your when you're doing your elevator pitch and you start talking about what you do and you do things like that, that's you have to be authentic like that. You have to go, well, yeah, this is the way I operate. If if you don't, they think that you're not paying attention to them in the comment stream or you're not paying attention on their in their uh, on their profiles or anything. So you know you have to kind of let everybody know this is this is the way that I am just. What I, what you see is exactly what you get. You know, you can dress me up, but you can't take me nowhere. <laughs> yeah, but you're here, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. I am here. Well, Stan, so you made a you made an offer a couple of days ago to anyone in the comment stream, mm -hmm. anyone who's here, to say I do, I do. And you would help them walk through the process. So let's see if we can get someone to say, I do, I do. I will tell you, one of my notes down there, down here, that because um, I, I like explaining things, you know, is, um, is that um, relationships. You know, one of, the, one of the things that when you are creating your... 15 second, I got that right that time, 15, I had to focus, um, 15 second uh, elevator pitch is that you have to think, you know, everything I learned um, in sales and how to do, and, and how to do that stuff, really, I learned, you know, I, you learn by dating, you learn that, you learn that stuff when you get, for, you know, you first start dating and stuff, you know, like, uh, Roses are red, violets are blue. He brought you a flower, so I brought you two. You know the the kind of stuff that makes the sense to that person, and you have to, then you have to learn it on the other side. Maybe, you know, well, Bobby, she said y'all was going out, but she didn't say y'all was dating. <laughs> you know, so you you have to learn how to do the relationship stuff and say things in a very short period of of time. You know, when you, you get engaged and you do things like. Um, uh, this Saturday, the 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 opera. I would I would love to. We'll listen to Barry Manilow on the way. You know, Florida and Georgia will play again next year. It's no big deal, you know. So you have to you have to learn how to have those little 
things and little words and little stuff in those sales positions, and regardless of what anybody says, you know, sales is still what drives everything. I know there's that whole concept out there about sharing is caring. I get it. I believe it. I understand. I'm a full. I'm a full believer in that. But you know, uh, you still have to have something in your arsenal to be able to help your cash register ring. And I, that's one of the things I like doing. I mean, I really like doing that. My my history before I got into technology was that. Has anybody has anybody said I do? I know that. I know that Leela had some stuff. Leela at Dog Petticoat, she said, I do, I do, in the stream the other day. So I'm, I made a couple of notes about her because it doesn't have to be an elevator. An elevator talk is very similar to a blog title, you know, the title of an article because you got this long to make somebody read. And I, I, know that, I noticed that Leela said, I do, I do, so I did jot down a couple of things about that, those. Uh, okay. All right, I'm why sorry. don't you go with Leela, and then uh, we have Roland, okay. Pavlova, and Kristen. So I think that will fill up the show. I need to know, um, I need to know while, I'm, uh, while I do this, make sure that they put their, get their uh, name and uh, their uh, website. And if you can post it in the chat over here on the side, I'll go look at that, because I can multitask, and I'll take okay, a look and see so something about Roland that and what they do. And Kristen, if you could both... Post your website in the comment stream so ta I can't talk. Stan can take a look. And um, and meanwhile, you're going to do Layla. Layla, yes. Okay, Layla, this is, this is a blog title for you. We don't let our clients bark orders at us, you know, because she's dog petticoat, right? Oh, she is. Yeah, and we get you out of a rough spot with your dog. I like that. And uh, we teach old dogs new tricks. That's that's kind of oh, this is my favorite. This is my favorite because it actually says something that really is is great. Which is all of our blog all of our blog pages are dog eared, which means that you're listening to who your clients are, that it's read a lot, and that um, you know. The dog-eared people get that. They kind of get all that stuff, you know. And, and since she's a, she since she's about dog petticoat, I just thought, I, I thought, man, that'd be a great article. Is all of our blog pages are dog-eared because when somebody reads that, they're going to go, how does how, how would you get a web page dog-eared? <laughs> you know, because it gets read so much, wow. and it symbolizes the fact that they're. I, I really like that. I, and it goes with their style. I love the petticoat. I don't yeah, I even do have a doggy anymore in my post-cancer life, but I just love love the way they approach dog dog uh, being with your dog. And then Nina Trankova says it's a burning truth. The tagline: Stan Bush, intention, action, and sales. That is absolutely right. That's absolutely. I, I see Kristen, and then I'm gonna open that one has. Is there another one in here? You said Roland. Meanwhile, meanwhile, while you're doing that, I'm going to bring up Lee Rickler says, if you can't put your proposition into a tweet, then it needs serious work. That's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> that is so true. I, I wrote an article back 15, I, well, it wasn't 15 years ago, but I wrote, it was about how uh, when Twitter came out, they couldn't believe at the high, local high school when I was telling them, y'all better start training them how to be a 140-character journalist because that's exactly what they're going to need to be in their in their careers. Did you get Kristen's... Um, Let's see. Join the Enlightened. Stop the Resistance. Did you get <laughs> Kristen's link? here? I'm wait. looking at it right now. Battle for the Net. Great. All right. See, I know a little bit about Kristen too. See, I, she's got this tagline that right now that says it's all about the herd. <laughs> and there's the first thing that the first things that that pop into my head when I start doing this because there there really is some things that you have to do. You know, you have to you have to describe what you do or give them something that makes them want you to describe what you do. And then you have to at some point like the expression of everything's on fire 
that's where I identify I identify the I, the client what their pain is, what it is that they're having a, you know, a problem. Because everybody kind of gets that man. Everything's on on fire, you know. You have to define who you are. I'm the guy to hire, you know. When everything is on fire, and then their the client ideal client response is that's something I want, you know. The next thing that you you do if you have if you if you want to do them in 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 a step, the next thing you do is you you think about what you want to happen next. And in my case, it doesn't mean it has to be in the actual you know verbiage, but it does need to be in it needs to be intoned. It needs to be inferred. It needs to be like make somebody want to find out exactly what that is. When when see and she says it's all about the herd. And I remember seeing that about seeing that with her, and I thought herd because I start thinking about herd and herd, you know, because people want to hear, and so that's probably the first start that I would have on her. She's got a, a mission statement of giving voice to the voices, connecting businesses with social. Let me bring this up. It's not changing pages. Giving voice to the voices through connecting businesses with social stuff. Let me think. And then let's think about what Kristen really does. Start that I would have on her. She's got a, a mission statement giving voice to the voices, connecting businesses with social. There's Roland. Roland's in here. Roland, Roland, we need your uh your web your website. Oh, my website's uh, a disaster right now because I had a transfer from two servers, so it's in the process of being rebuilt. Okay. I can show you the basics, definitely. Okay, so I then what you can the, do for... Put the link in the chat. That would help. And yeah. let's let Stan finish with, with Kristen for the moment. You, you could start with your, your elevator pitch by saying, if you want to see a disaster get fixed, watch my site. <laughs> I think I'll decline that one, but uh, it's a you know, actually in today's world, this was the thing that we were talking about because this is more about this is really about sales and marketing in today's world and the way that people are talking about um, what were we discussing before a hand transparency, right? Is yes. in today's world people kind of accept that? I mean, it's like you know, it's a it might be a train wreck, but. So what? Can you fix it? That's really what they want to know. Is that you know, if you got this this, this train wreck over Absolutely. here, can you fix it? So, are you going to put your the link to yours? And and I haven't forgotten about you, Kristen. I'm just thinking about giving voice to the voices through connecting business with social conscience. And and what you really do to me, and I, I you know, I, I, so you can have a you can have a hangout with three people, and Kristen shows up. And 300 people show up, and they talk in a language that is like Punjabi or something. I don't know what it is. I can't. I don't understand anything what she's talking about 90% of the time. But she is communicating with those people on this really different level. And so, to really get her, to get her a a, a, a 15 second, you know, um, elevator pitch for her is. You know, I make your hangouts. I, actually, she could just say, you know, I make your events brighter. I make your events. I make your events get heard. Or I make because she's got that herd thing, and she's got this. She's like a. I mean, she she's just sparkle. walks into a room. Yeah, sparkle. sparkle. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like. Um, uh, uh, but that that's kind. Of, that's what. That's the things that I would start leading on with her and start thinking about, and it would it would. Uh, it would hit me that the challenge would be because um, I don't want to rhyme every time uh, although there's a certain uh, uh, benefit to it and by the way I will say this is that this is exactly the kind of hangouts that are going to be taking place um, going forward is that it's okay to work on these things in public and let people know, because what they want to do is that people come to a hangout to kind of 
they come there to learn, and they come to, you know, a lot of times, or they come to see who's there, and they come. There's a lot of reasons. They're social events, but, but a lot of times people show up because they want a work thing. They want to know, um, you know, how exactly that you do this. So what I'm going through here in talking out loud is that process. Is that I look at her mission statement, and you know what? I did turn that off. I did turn that off. I, I promise you, I hit, I hit. <laughs> I mean, I'll hit power off again, but um, but anyway. Um, I, I want to bring up a comment from Johan. Johan. Yeah, Johan. here we go. Guy Kawasaki refers to a narrative. Is this the same as a sales pit? He says, you put that back up there again and let me read yeah, that here, one. Again. Here you go. Whoops. Guy Kawasaki refers to a narrative. Is, is this the same? as a sales pitch um, I don't know you would have to ask you'd have to ask a guy that I don't really know I can't answer for him I can tell you that for me it's not you know a sales pitch for me sales pitches are hardcore stuff sales pitches is where you go through step one step two step three you're gonna come in you're gonna take a test drive number two you're gonna fall in love with the car number three we're gonna go uh, sit down and talk about your financing number four I'm gonna find out whether or not you know you're gonna buy this and then I'm gonna hammer you till you do that's a sales pitch and to me those aren't half as effective as something that somebody says you know like I said it's, it, it is there's a lot of truth to the relationship thing as long as you can perform what you said you know w when when you did it or when you made that thing but a sales pitch is for me um, I don't I'm, I'm not crazy about them I do think that they have a place for them but a narrative what they're talking about, what I think he's talking about, is what the purpose of a mind of everything is on fire is a narrative is, okay, now let me figure out, or yours, let's take yours, I'm a, I'm a human ibuprofen. What does that mean? I take all that pain. Well, yeah, I got some pain. Well, tell me about it. Because then they start talking about it, right? Right, exactly. That's what that is the about. major part of... Uh, relationship marketing which we just kind of touched on earlier but it's mm -hmm. so important is the conversation that develops and so when you look at your elevator pitch it's, a, it's like the start of the conversation for somebody <laughs> for somebody, I, I'm going to bring this. Up. For somebody who doesn't know you, I just, I, let me finish my thought because I have to bring this up. Jeremy Murphy says, "Be heard by the herd." Yeah, actually, that's very good, Jeremy. I mean, I, I think that's very good. I help you get heard by the herd. You know, uh, something. Um, I help the unheard get heard. I mean, that's the first thing when you start. That's what again. That's what these hangouts. Are going to start moving towards is very much a war because Jeremy, that's what that's what they're talking about when you know um, sharing is caring is like Jeremy just gave that in because he was here and he could do it. That doesn't mean that he's going to 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 put a devote you know three hours of his time trying to figure out something like that for her because. You just can't these days. You know, there's so much that's going on. Those are real business transactions that have to take place, which is what the the the, the things that are, are coming up to to uh, to fruition right now in a lot of different ways. Is these are real business transactions. If you want to be, if you if you want to use, there was a hangout before this around one o'clock. I can't remember the name of it, but what that's what they were discussing is is that the transactions that are occurring online. If you've gone out there just to be sociable, you're out there, then do that. But if it's if you think that there's a business transaction that you're going to do, you need to do exactly what Jeremy did. Anybody that's that's watching this or that sees this goes, that Jeremy guy's pretty smart. Man, I might get in touch with him because he's he's all right, you know. And uh, and he gave that freely just based off of the conversation that he heard. So. Yeah, I, I think that that is where I, that's what I would do. I would I would do something about about herd. You know, I I get your herd herd. You know? <laughs> I want to bring up a comment from Lee Rickler. Remember that your sales pitch is about what you can do for me. 
what problems can you solve? Yes, yes, so I absolutely. About being a human ibuprofen. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. I know who that guy is too, by the way. I, I, I read his stuff and watch it. Yeah, I, 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 I do read and watch a lot of stuff. I know who he is. Uh, he's a smart guy. Smart guy. I'm very, like, very smart guy and uh, and a great sense of humor. So we have um, about ten minutes. So I thought we could uh, roll on with. With Roland. Roland, did you did you get his link so you can take a pit a pee? Basically, just R and D hotline. So two Ds there R and D hotline dot com. Oh, will you tell me what you do uh, while I'm going I'm there? An internet marketer specializing in WordPress, YouTube videos, and G plus setup as it pertains to Google ranking. So I I preach that there's a very effective tripod setup with those three things and that table will stand if you build it. So uh, what I say is that I'm R&D hotline, research and development, which indicates the flow of information on the internet always changing. And uh, if I don't know the answer, I get the answer. So if you have a question, call the hotline. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is because this is a multi, this, there's a couple of things that, that, that yeah. you have to know. Number one is that um, your site, the, who, I, it's probably on a Linux box, but when you go to your site, unless you, unless it's uppercase R and lower uh, uppercase D and uppercase H, it did not come up on my browser. It, it ran oh. hotline, did not come up unless I put uppercase in it and and usually that means that the the server has something in it that recognizes that and I don't want to get all into all of that but some of the guys out and some, some of the people out in the audience just went oh yeah yeah I know what you're talking about because they run servers and stuff like that so you right. need to have them kind of check on that because you don't want to have to tell anybody like I wouldn't even tell I wouldn't say R&D hotline I just say RAND hotline I mean that's what I do RAND oh, hotline yeah yeah because it's like you know, mine, I got like the longest domain in the world, salestrainingandnetworking.com. And, but it became, it, the reason I got that was because I told the first guy I ever, the first guy I ever billed asked me who to write. He said, you know, you ought to do this for a living. And I said, okay, well, I'll start with you. And he said, okay, well, who do I make a check out to? And I said, make it out to Stan. And he said, what's that stand for? And I said, sales, training, and networking. That's the first thing that came off the top of my head. So that's the domain that I've had forever. But I would I should I should shorten it down. But I can tell you that when you're that the, the speech that you're talking about, I would probably narrow it down to to something along the lines of okay, so you, you help let me make sure I understand this. You help people create videos online? I'm a web designer, a video specialist, and I I preach the tripod of a machine. It's it's a big story, and and that what I gave you is not my elevator pitch. And oh, okay, if let I were me to hear your elevator elevator pitch. Let me Let's hear. It. See. Well, I don't have one, but I ah. used to. You know, as it is, the last uh, few months I've I've uh, transformed, I could say. But I basically would say, hi, I'm an internet marketer specializing in the three things that will make you visible online and get you on Google. Okay, here's my response. and Because because I'm a real open, straight-up guy. Okay, here's my response. <laughs> because I, I, I hear that all the time, Internet marketer. But there's there's when I, 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 something that I did at first, when I, because I was in this deal pretty early, in the 94, around 94. So I, I had, like, uh, bulletin boards. But what I would do if I were you, I would start focusing on things like, this is exciting. This is exciting. Do you know how, you know, here, somebody says, what do you do? You know all that exciting stuff people are doing online? Do you know what I'm talking about? All that exciting stuff that people do online? I help them do that. And they go, let me, let, let me feed you something else that may steer you differently. I am a firm believer that a lot of the marketers online are preaching the wrong stuff. So I've curated through, and I've come up with my own ideas. So I have a unique stand on that. I believe that outbound is out and inbound is in, and that 80% of the marketers out there are still forcing outbound marketing. So 
four out of five people that peop that uh, someone wants a website, four out of five people that they're going to hire are going to feed them the wrong information and do the wrong job. Yeah, that's true, and I think that's why why what Stan had to say, you know, you know all that exciting stuff that people people do. That what that is like, whatever that person's perception mm -hmm. of the exciting stuff is, yeah, is like they're with you, they're right yeah. with you. And that's a, that's a great then point. your next like step is to lot. find out what it is that they think is exciting. So, but I, I, I really like how how Stan distilled it down because <laughs> we're right back to you know total stranger. Don't know you. Don't know your business. You're right. Don't You're right. About you. So. So uh, with what I just said, Stan, does that change what you were thinking at all? Well, it changes, and it changes. It doesn't do anything for an elevator speech, though. I mean, it, does, it doesn't do anything for a one-line thing. You, you, what you have to really look for is a one-line zinger kind of thing that does stuff. I mean, just the opposite of that. I used to when because when I first started doing it, there was, you know, that worked, and then I also found out that by saying, "You ever been to a website?" Have you ever been to a website and it comes up with that message that it can't be displayed? Have you ever have you ever been to one of those like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, none of mine do that, and so it immediately makes them go, "What? Yeah, none of mine do that." And so they go, "I want to know a little bit more about what this guy's talking about." And what, but specifically, I, I would like to address very shortly what you talked about inbound, and outbound. That has to be has to do with community real genuine community not a community of if you can follow a million guys good for you I can't talk to a million people at one time exactly. have, communities are going to have to be built around community leaders and they're going to have to be built around around functions that each community person does because you know some of the guys that I met early on uh, in development you know uh, you know in Seattle I mean it's like this guy, these guys work for y'all. Yeah, we let them come in the back door, you know, because they they would they didn't know how to talk to anybody, but they were really really good coders. So there should be, but so there's a place in that community for them, and you have to have, you have to. What's going to have to happen is we can't all do everything. So you have to kind of like start spreading that. But that that's one of the things I think about when I think about development, is that to be different. Everybody says, hey, I make the neatest, greatest, most wonderful websites in the world, man. You should come over there because all of our stuff uses HTML5 and we got this and we got that and blah, blah, blah. Instead of just saying something like that, like, you know, you know, have you ever been to a, a website and when you got there you thought, what is this about? Well, none of ours are like that. You know, so you can take that other approach with them too. But you need to narrow it down and think about something very, very short, very, very short. You know that says because because people's attention spans, especially when they're in a, an elevator or in that kind of environment where it's five seconds or ten seconds. Like it takes me because of the environment. I can tell you that the reason my dog started barking was because that went off and that meant that my dog had to be um, had to be fed. But fortunately, I heard my son back there. So. Everybody knows now exactly what that was in a very short period of time. Communication when you're writing, you know, there's a, a bunch of, 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 of ways to experiment with this is that write out what you do and then reduce what you do to 10 words. Reduce it to 10 words. And, and when you start doing that, when you take that big, I take long, blah, 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 blah and you go, I'm going to cut this down to 10 words, you're going to be surprised. Way surprised. I do. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet now because I, I have a tendency to talk way too much. But. Well, I think that's really great, and we're coming to the end of our time, and you've just been fabulous. And I want to thank the Zapsters who volunteered to go in public and have have Stan take a look at helping you reduce it down. And the, you know, the whole purpose of the midweek zap is to help you all and leave, have you leaving with actionable steps and that's exactly what we've done here today and Stan I can't thank you enough um, and Roland just real quickly um, Lee Rickler agrees narrow your tools down to a specific niche and Leela once more 
says all of Stan's elevator pitches break the ice and soften the edges so a genuine conversation begins easily. Oh, I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was what I, you know, in the thing that I, I, I changed about the elevator pitch when I saw the, the announcement go out was that, you know, it's not really an elevator pitch what you're looking for is you're looking for a sales generating conversation starter. That's what you really, you know, you can kid yourself and say that's not what you're doing. And, and you're going to have to forgive me, but I've got to tell, I told you, I've got to say all the props in the world, not just because of who she is, but I want to tell Mia, I appreciate what she's done for me and what she helped me with, Mia Voss. Uh, everybody would know who that is, I think. Um, and Les Dossie. Les Dossie has been great and really helped me make this transition from I don't want to be a technical guy. Um, and of course, you, Zara. I, I want to tell you, I really appreciate uh, you asking me because really, when, I, you never know what I'm going to. I mean, but you never know what I might say. I mean, it's, you it's know just, what? You never know. Though, that's a part of you know what happens on the midweek zap is it's never scripted, and it it's like having genuine con conversations. It is about solving problems for people. It is about, you know, audience participation. And we've done that all today, Stan. And it's just been a super, super pleasure having you here today. I want to thank everybody here for all your comments and your questions. And Roland actually coming on board and joining us live. That was fantastic. And lots to think about. And just to give you a heads up for next week, we have Bandit is joining us, and Christine DeGraff is going to be talking about how Bandit got a huge audience and how you can do that too. So I want to thank everyone. Thank you, Stan. That was just fabulous. It was so much fun. And thank you all Zapsters, and we'll see you next week.